Joining me right now is former Trump Deputy National Security Advisor. She is author of the book, Revolution, Trump, Washington, and We the People. Katie McFarland is here. Katie, it's great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's great to talk with you about something that you lived. Uh, and, and, you know, now people are seeing what has been revealed with that document dump of the last week. And we know that they never had any evidence of collusion to begin with, KT. So how were they so effective yeah. in getting the entire country up in arms that President Trump was some kind of a Russian asset? This was something that I poo-pooed and you know, went wild about uh, very early in, in this whole narrative because it was so clear yeah. to me that it was made up. You know, Maria, you were actually one of the few people and one of the first people to call this out for what it was, which was just a sham. It was a scam. I mean, the senior intelligence officials of the Obama administration and the senior officials of the Obama administration, they knew there was nothing there. But at the same time, as their intelligence chiefs were going up to the House Intelligence Committee saying there's no collusion, there's no collaboration, um, Trump, you know, the Russians didn't throw the election to President Trump. And yet, at the same time, they were all going out publicly and saying, oh, Trump is a Russian asset, or Trump never would have won that election unless it was for Russian interference, and implying that Trump was somehow Putin's puppet. Well, now we find out, as more documents were released last week, there will be more coming this week, and they are going to show an awful lot of, of sort of odd circumstances, like fishy stuff, like handwritten notes of officials, um, the, the whole unmasking thing. I mean, there's a lot of very fishy stuff in the unmasking. All the names of yeah. people who were on those forums, and several have come forward and said, well, they didn't put their names on those forums. So who did? Who was orchestrating this? I think it was probably coming from the West Wing itself. And, and with time, this yeah. will be uncovered, and it will be found out, and particularly yeah. as people start talking about their bosses. And, and the point that I tried to make for so many years is that if it's so easy for the leadership at the FBI and the leadership at the CIA mm -hmm. to completely undo somebody's relationship, to completely trash somebody who, you know, has done a, a, the, the country a service at, through the media, then what does that mean for you and me? I mean, what does that mean for any regular person who doesn't have this kind of access? You're dead in the water if they want you to be. In fact, I interviewed President Trump last week, KT, and your yeah. name came up during our interview about the Flynn case. Listen to what the president said about you. Watch. I watched KT McFarland the other day. I watched where she was knock, knock, FBI. You know, the FBI, okay? This was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. The whole thing was corrupt. And we caught them. We caught them. You and what I you saw, saw just now, I watched Biden yesterday. He could barely speak. He was on Good Morning America, right? And he said he didn't know anything about it. And now it just gets released right after he said that. It gets released that he was one of the unmaskers, meaning he knew everything about it. So he lied to your friend George Stephanopoulos. So, KT, the president reacted to the unmasking list as soon as it, we were about to sit down and we both got the list. So it was like immediate yeah. live reaction. But but what he said to you about you, knock, knock, FBI. Can you tell us what happened, KT? What did he mean by that? It was knock, knock, FBI. They showed up at my head, left government. They showed up at my house on Long Island. Knock, knock, knock. It's the FBI. Can we come in? Uh, we want to talk to you about wow. that we're from the Mueller investigation. We want to find out from you, you know, what happened during the campaign. And I said, well, that wasn't part of the campaign. Well, we want to find out what happened during the transition. And I said, well, I never met with any Russians during the transition. That wasn't my job. And I said, well, we just want to get some, you know, get some sense of what went on. And then I asked them, Maria, do I need a lawyer? Am I under some kind of an investigation? And they said, oh, no, you're not under an investigation. You're a fact witness. Uh, we can't tell you not to get a lawyer, but we're here, just, we're already here. We've come all the way up from Washington. Washington. Let us just ask you a couple of questions. So this goes on and on for several more meetings, for 20, 30 hours of 
now becoming interrogation by the FBI agents, and they seized my files, my phone records, my text messages, my emails, and they wouldn't give them me access to them. They would sort of hand them out one at a time, redacted, out of sequence, and then quiz me about them. And if I got something wrong, if I said, well, I'm not sure if I talked to General Flynn an hour before his phone call with the Russian ambassador, or I talked to him that morning, well, they would then say, well, you know, you should have remembered that. That's so important. We think you're dissembling. We think you're lying to us. And that's when they tried to trap me on a perjury charge. And that's what President Trump was referring to. They try to trap you on an a perjury is... charge and then force you to plead guilty because you know why? They can bankrupt you if you have to go to court. And that's their ultimate weapon. That's what they did people. to General Flynn. That's what they yes. did to General Flynn. And then they tried to corner him about his son. Any father would be like, well, wait, leave my son out of this. And so he just went along yes. with it. But with the, the story that you just told, KT, is disgusting. It's disgusting. You're there in your home. They knock on the door and say, oh, yeah, let me just casually ask you a few questions, hoping to entrap you. Did you ever get a lawyer, KT, or did you cut it off? I did. This is, I mean, <laughs> I got the such, best lawyer such, in the such country. A dilemma. <laughs> I got the best lawyer so, in the so country, went, um, Bob yeah. Jeffra from Sullivan mm -hmm. and Cromwell, and then that that sorted things out. But it was so bad, Maria. They were at the they were stopped at the foot of my driveway, and they waited for me to come back from exercise class and my husband to leave, and then that was knock knock knock. So they were wait they they had wow. the whole thing planned from the beginning. They were trying to entrap KT, people. Was this and, Peter Strzok? I was collateral because I know it was Peter Strzok. It no, was Peter no, he Strzok was that went to General Flynn. Did he come Flynn. to your door? No, he was not the knock, knock, knock man. Um, but I, I will say that um, with General Flynn, as you point out, they blackmailed him. But not only with bankruptcy, but he sacrificed himself for his son. And this was all a setup. They knew there was nothing to it. And yet they dragged people like me as collateral damage into this. They dragged the country through three years of division. We were at each other's throats. We were not paying attention to business in the national conversation. And why? Because they hated Trump oh, so I know. much. They hated I lost Donald friends Trump. over it. That's right. I lost <laughs> friends over it, KT. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, and this is so disgusting. Thank you for sharing that story. I know you write all about it in Thank your you book, Maria. which is a fabulous read. Thanks for writing the book. And please come back soon, KT. Really good to see you.